We're enormously proud as an organisation to be able to put up the thousands plaque and that it's on our watch and the thrill that it will be to the suffrage organisation, the Women's Freedom League. We've been making blue plaques for over 20 years and a blue plaque is so significant because it tells people that either the building is very important or someone of significance lived there. And it's a way of reminding people that the famous names that they know, you know, once walked the same streets as they did. I'm Rebecca Preston, Blue Plaques historian with the English Heritage London Scheme, and I've come here today to have a look at the place where our 1,000th blue plaque will be going up. The Women's Freedom League campaigned for women's suffrage, the vote, and for equal rights more generally, and they were formed in 1907 after a split with the Women's Social and Political Union, better known as the Suffragettes. English Heritage are trying to redress the balance between plaques to men, of which there are an awful lot, and plaques to women, of which there are significantly fewer. It's a great thing to be involved in, and progress has been made, but progress is still quite slow for real equality. The League used principles of non-violent direct action, such as withholding taxes of various forms, and they led the way in boycotting the 1911 census, which was also picked up by other suffrage organisations. The League's motto in 1908 was Dare to be Free, underlining its aim to emancipate women in general, not just to have the vote. Among its leading members were Charlotte Despard, Teresa Billington-Gregg and Edith Howe Martin. It was a democratic organisation and because it isn't so much associated with a single figurehead in the way that the two other suffrage organisations were, I think that's contributed to the fact it's not so well known and has an undeservedly lesser public profile perhaps. After the Equal Franchise Act of 1928, when women finally got the vote on the same terms of men, the League switched to campaigning for equal rights, equal pay, and it continued to campaign until 1961 when it was finally dissolved. When the League was founded in 1907, it took headquarters in Buckingham Street, just off the Strand, and then the following year it moved here, a few streets away, to number one Robert Street, where the plaque will be placed. Number one Robert Street was part of the pioneering development near Delphi, built between 1768 and 1774. And in fact, it's one of the few parts to survive because most of it was pulled down in 1936. This was the Women's Freedom League's longest address and it was where they were most active. It was really important in terms of the suffrage campaign. There was also a suffrage library where campaign books and pamphlets could come and be consulted. And it would have been a really bustling headquarters with women coming in and out to collect pamphlets and the vote, the League's journal, and a place where people made the next steps in the campaign. So it would have been quite an exciting place to be around as well as inside, I think. In 2016, just after English Heritage became a charity, we launched an appeal asking the public to nominate more remarkable women from the past. And since then, we've had a huge increase. And I'm really pleased to say that for the first time, the Blue Plaques panel, our panel of experts, is approving more plaques to women than men. We're also enormously grateful to our donors who make the scheme possible, along with members of the public who also are very generous. Without them, our work would not be possible. It's a great privilege to work on a scheme like this that's been running for over 150 years. I know I can speak for my colleagues too, that it gives us great pleasure to walk around London and to see a plaque and to know that it would be enjoyed by future generations. It's an important part of the London Blue Plaque scheme that the original building should survive. We believe it's the building that makes the connection between the people of the past and the London of today. Mm -hmm.